people! It's Tam here from Willowing Arts and I have some exciting news! I have some new stencils out! to just oh I wanted to show them to you today and show you what you can uh, show you what you can do with them and also if you are interested in winning a couple uh, of my um, stencils then do come to the blog and leave a comment and uh, uh, and, and then you'll be um, entered into a prize draw and I will pick a winner of a set of stencils so let me tell you all about them oh! I'm so excited. So uh, mine are already very dirty because I've been using them. <laughs> I've been using them for the last two, three weeks. I've got two sets of stencils out with her, with um, Artist Seller. One is a set of stencils that have whimsy um, elements in them. Hold on, let me just find them all. Um, so we've got the butterfly wings, as you can see here. Uh, whimsical flowers. Then I have... Oops... Uh, whimsical houses, little houses. I'm showing them there, and uh, hanging hearts, hanging stars, and hearts and moons. Those are. This is one set. This is the whimsy set. Very very proud of them. It was so much fun to create them all. And then I also have a set out with written words, or what is it? Handwritten, stylized words. And these are particularly ha uh, cool for people who, because on my courses, whenever I um, run any courses in there and it involves any handwriting, a lot of people um, don't like their own handwriting and they get really upset and they don't want to include any writing because they feel like they're ruining their beautiful page. So for those of you who feel like that, these stencils are great if you wanted to add some uplifting words to your... Um, to your to your journal page or your painting without actually writing it yourself and or you can use it to develop you know use it as inspiration and develop your own um, your own handwriting and you know develop your own style of handwriting and make it more stylized so these two I have these two sets out and they come in this really pretty package with my name on it and everything and I feel so proud <laughs> So, let me uh, just show you a few ways that you can use these. I've got, I've got f piles and piles of, of, um, <laughs> of stuff that I've been doing with the jelly, jelly printing and the stencils. Um, this is just a, this is a quick, just to how it looks when you spray through one of the word stencils. That's just one example. Let me have a look through, because these, these are all kind of in progress and triads. Here it is when you... This is one um, where you actually sort of dab paint through and you can also use it with a modeling paste for instance. The cool thing about these, so these are again, this is like a, a tryout, these are all tryouts, is that you can also use them as the mask and the mask can be like a card or something in itself. Anyway, let me just have a quick look through. Now oh, here you can here you can see oh, some of the butterfly do you see the white butterfly there? That, that's come from my stencil as well. So they're really beautiful. They can be really beautiful as kind of like a background slash element in your, like a page like this. This was also just a trial, a tryout. But they can, they can, they're just really beautiful as part of a sort of pattern, pattern in the background. And here are the little houses with the whimsy, uh, whimsy character flying above. Can you see this? And these, you see, so here, for instance, this is nice. This is one of the words, again, the gratitude. But also here is a, um, a reverse or a mask of the flowers. And I love how grungy, it's almost like a print, how grungy that comes out. Now, here again, is, this is also a mask of the hanging stars and, stars and hearts. And... This again has the gratitude word in there. Here, here I've done some more with the butterflies as you can see and I actually drew a little butterfly around it. This is also a way you can use them. Uh, that, that, this is like if you wanted to really center the words you can create around it. Obviously this is not finished but that's another example. Some of you will have seen me create this 
in another video. So this is uh, actually these. This includes Jane Davenport's stencils and my own stencils. So this is the Hanging Hearts and Stars that I've used. And this is a page that I created for my, one of my life book lessons. And I included the gratitude word there. Very pretty. And then here, so the other thing you can do with the words, is I need to just do it that way, as you can see, is use the word beautiful and then you can write around it. You know, you can do other things, you know, add your own words and your own handwriting to it. So, yeah, and here, this is just still in process, in progress. So I was drawing a girl and they um, had the hanging stars above. And here again I used um, the You Are Good Enough stencil and I kind of embellished around it as a central focus point, which you don't have to do, but you could do if you wanted to. So yeah, so there's lots of possibilities there. I'll show you, I have a little bit more here as well where I tried stuff out. The love, oh, there's the loved one, the loved word, it's very pretty. And uh, You Matter in, in Mask, I don't know if you can see that. The You Matter in Mask there. So, so there's loads of stuff you can do with it. So today I wanted to just play with, uh, show you a few ways you can do, you can use them. And um, and also I'll just show you one one piece, one one entire um, page that I'll create in its in, in its entirety and fast forward. Um, best to use them on, best to create or use them on um, watercolor paper. Okay, so. With the butterflies, if you just so you can use them as sort of background, just backgroundy, you know, like stuff in the background. So you do a few over each other, and then you create on top of it. So that's just simple with sprayings, let's say. So we used some sprayings. I'm using dilution sprayings. Some of you know um, these inks. They are by the lovely Diane Rebelly, who also teaches on Lifebook 2014, by the way. And you know, as a start, if you just wanted to start off with a background, you could just spray some ink through them. And just here now, I'm just kind of, hold on, let's see if you can see it. So, and then I just used, what I did was I just uh, turned it round so I could use the rest of the, the ink that's on there. So you just get splodges and splashes and whatever. And then maybe you want to, did I put them that way as well? Use another colour. Oh, I've got some green here. Oh, oh, <laughs> I was spraying the wrong way. <laughs> Do I want green? Or maybe I just want blue, not green. Like that. Oh, and so this is just to use um, this way. You can just use like make a nice like starter background with a few. Um, a few of the of the elements and they'll become just part and a vaguely part of the background which I often this is often how I use stencils so after this after this I could would then work on top of it and see what happens with the whole thing you see so then you would have you would end up with maybe some vague butterflies in the background or not depending on how much you wanted to keep them uh, a focal point okay so that's one of the example put that away and I might use that as a background later <coughs> so then Another way you can use them, which I love, 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 and I showed you an example already of what I did earlier with, uh, is use them as a mask. And basically the mask, so if you use the flowers for instance, so a mask, um, <coughs> using stencils as masks works as follows. So you want a bit of um, diluted, not too diluted, but thinnish paint, so got, maybe use golden just use any fluid acrylics. Let's have a think about colours. So I have this um, di di diary lied, lied colour. And you can also use some spray ink. Let's do that way. I'll see. Because you need to you might you might want to sometimes do a few um, trials with this method. So you need to add the paint to uh, the actual stencil. So don't do it on the page. Make sure that you don't have the page that you want to work on under that, because <laughs> you're gonna make mess. So, so this is just a piece of copier paper. So add your um, add your paint, and it needs to be okay. You need to find a sort of a uh, a way that that it so that you don't have so that it's not too fluidy, but not too dry. Because if it's too fluidy, it might become a bit um, too smushed. Everything just smushes. 
and if it's not if it's too dry then you don't get any get a print because basically what you're doing is we're monoprinting almost we're going to monoprint the 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 stencil so you're going to get the reverse almost like the negative if you will okay so you need to find you need to do that with fluid paint and it's nice if you add um, another color so let's uh, add some a spray on there as well not on, on the entire thing but mix it a bit mix it in a bit so you get a bit of variety and like I said you don't want it to be too I'm, I'm thinking that I'm probably slightly too wet here at the moment so this is not what we're looking for this is not the um, the thing that we're looking for so I'm gonna just dip dab something some of it off not too much okay then you get your get the page that you want the print on put it down on reverse let's say if we did it in the middle use maybe a brayer or your hands and just press it down if you do a brayer then you're going to get kind of a good uh, distribution of, the, of it all do that and you can go out if this is some paint coming out it's quite nice if you go around it as well so you can get a bit more and this can again just function as a background or you can make it a focal point if you wanted to. Okay, and you pull it off and ta-da! You see how pretty that is? So you get a really faint kind of print. A bit like a, what's it called, like a, um, uh, a jelly, print, pr jelly print print almost. But see, now I didn't use, I just brownie what is the color cinnamon and garnet and uh, yellow but you can do more extreme colors so let's do it on the back one so let's do another one and get um let's see i'll fold this up and do two two more extremer colors so we might do yellow and blue or something so let's do that yellow again just put that at the at the bottom and you need to work fairly quickly because you don't want the paint to dry, but that's why it's good to use fluid acrylics. If you use heavy body, it'll probably dry too quickly, so be careful. Then let's add some of that. Um, what's this called? This is called teal. I love teal. Most of us do. And um, of course, the ink doesn't the ink doesn't um, dry as quickly as the fluid acrylics. But anyway, so now we're going to do the same thing. Gonna use the other side. Oops. And up. Oh, oh, I dropped a little bit of ink on there. Anyway, like that. Just press lightly if you're thinking, oh, a bit too much ink. See, I think it's already smudged a bit, but that's okay. You don't want too much smudging, otherwise you lose all the, the you lose the detail, don't you? So like that. Pull it up. And there you go. To see now, the only thing that happened, but it's really pretty. I love it. I love the sort of vagueness of it all. But to see the thing is here now that this was drier already than the ink there, and the ink is a bit more picks, picks up more. But you can refine this process, so you can, you know, you need to really play with how thick does your paint need to be, how how thin, da -da -da, that sort of stuff. So they're really great background starters, and not just that though. So they're great as background starters with nice vague um, floral imprints, if you will. But they're also great as focal points. So if you wanted to add, let's say you could, um, let's say if you created a painting of some sort and you just wanted to have three flowers at the bottom here or something, you could just add these, mask these out, dab them in. So that's another way. Like, let me show you what else you can do with them. So, so with the words, for instance, or even with these, if you wanted to get a slightly more crisp, um, crisp outcome. And I have here the word angels, for instance, so you could put them on, let's say if you were to made a page or something with two of your children and you wanted to have the word angels on there, but you don't want to write it, handwrite it yourself, then um, a good way of adding, um, um, adding this word to your page is get something sponge-like, very cheap here actually, these, because they also come with this kind of sponge, sponge brush. So it's sort of circular and you can kind of go like that. And then if you want to get a really crisp, nice um, print, if you will, of this word, the angel's word, just point that that way, and you wanted to do it with black, best to go with a, um, a heavy body acrylics. So this is a heavy body acrylics. 
in this case. In other scenarios you could use, um, well you could even do it with the fluid, fluid acrylics. But again the fluid, because it's fluid, is um, a bit more it's a bit more likely to, to go a bit more smudgy and kind of in this case I'm going for trying to get a nice crisp crisp um, <laughs> crisp print. So make make your sponge dryish. Don't have a very wet don't ever don't have a wet sponge and then get a very sm a small amount of paint on your brush and then start to dab what is it sponge? your paint over the word that you want to add to your page and just sponge it like I'm doing right now. So just dab, dab, dab it on. It also comes with a few kind of cute things like hearts and dots and stars like that. You can also use black Ta-da! It's so pretty! You see? I oh, love it. It's so pretty. It comes out really well if you do it that way. So you sponge it in. You can also use probably like a um, a pen or a marker, but there's a lot of uh, connectors, so you, you might be faffing a long time. This way is faster and it comes out really beautifully. So this you can add to wherever, you know, any kind of beautiful art that you're creating. Now, in the last way I wanted to show you how to you, how you can use them as well is with um, the modeling paste, which is wonderful. Uh, where is my little bit of do do Okay, can't find my modeling paste, but I found my texture paste, which is a different sort of paste, but it's the same kind of not not the same concept, but you can do something similar with it. So, uh, you can do this obviously with any kind of stencil, but it's a beautiful, it gives you this beautiful effect. So what you do is if you use the, ah, uh, let's use another one, so let me show you the, so you can do this either over a painting that you've already created, or you can start off with it, and then work over, work with it, work over it. So, um, here are the hearts and stars and hearts, and um, if you've got maybe a card or a, um, a palette knife, Use an old card like this. That's no longer usable. And then put a bit of your texture paste on on the card or modeling paste. Modeling paste is a bit lighter. Texture paste can also is uh, is thicker and coarser, but it doesn't matter. You can use both. Both can be used for the same purposes. Yep. So, and then you start to just scrape, scrape, go over your stencil and just scrape the paste over. And what it's doing, okay, I've got a car, some color in there, but what it's now doing is obviously it's filling up the holes. Oh, I'm just realizing that I'm, I'm using the stencil reverse, but anyway, never mind. <laughs> so it's filling up the, the, the stencil bits, obviously, and we'll leave behind, we'll, we'll leave behind the once you um, move it, a, a raised section of the erased, um, what is it, version of the stencils. And then once you start to create around it, and when it's dry, you need to wait until it's dry, obviously. And then just scrape it off. Scrape it in and over and in and over, if you will. Make sure that you clean your stencil afterwards, so otherwise you're, it's going to, the, the um, paste starts to dry on top of it. And once you remove it, you'll have a raised section of the, uh, an, of, of, an, of, the, of the stencil, and that will look really beautiful. Um, you can then kind of, so it comes out a little bit like 3D, not 3D, 2D, no, whatever that is, <laughs> not 3D. Show you what I mean in a moment. And then when you let it dry, and then if you um, go over it, let's say with an ink pad or something, which I'll show you in a moment. Right, so now we're pulling it off, and you'll see you'll get a nice, beautiful... 
So pretty, look at that! I love it! So, you get now a raised sort of print of the stencil. I'll show you. If we close up, you see how beautiful that is. And you do that without the texture paste or modeling paste. Even gesso might work, but we need thick, you need something thick. Now let's, I'm going to let this dry and then show you what beautiful things you can do with the dried stuff, the dried version of that, okay? Okay, so now that it's dry, when it feels really nice, so you can see how raised that is and how beautiful. You can obviously just leave it as it is if you wanted to put it on a card, for instance, and send to a friend or something. But you can also do really cool stuff like with, if you've got um, ink pads, for instance, nice color or whatever. Um, let me have a look for a nice color. If you then go over with the, with the face down. Oh god, it's so nice. You see that this can come, it then starts to pop. You see? And of course then you can do all sorts, you can do other stuff, you can kind of start to draw around them, add your own embellishments to them, maybe outline them or something, you can do whatever you want to them. And also with the thing, the method that I just showed you with the, um, with the texture paste, you could also do that on top of, let's say, an already created background, which I might do in my next demonstration. So after this little intro, I'll show you, I'm going to show you a page created with the stencils as well so I might include this so you look for instance now I'm just kind of adding actually drawing around them I don't know you know you can do whatever you want you can maybe hang you know you can do this you know you can add sort of other hold on you can add other embellishments to them you know the way I initially had them designed was with dots sort of like this but it's too, that's too small to add to a stencil, so I couldn't do that, but you could do that yourself, that kind of thing. You know, you can add little starry stars to them. It's really cool, they're really versatile and very diverse. You can do all sorts of stuff with stencils this way. I absolutely love, love using them with, um, oh sorry, I didn't even show you that, did I? I love using them with um, modeling and texture paste. I've done that on one of my other courses on the the Summer Goddess we do that and you can create such beautiful patterns and textures as part of your painting. Very nice! Anywho, so, so guys, I'm super excited about my new stencils and uh, I hope you'll, you'll get yourself a set or two or three or four woohoo! And um, you can buy them on artistseller.com I'll put the link uh, below and also, um, I'm probably going to be selling them in my Etsy shop at some point. I don't have any ordered yet, but I will. So um, check them out and I uh, hope you enjoy the, set. the rest of this video where I'm showing you a page that I've created with my stencils. Alright guys, bye! Thanks for watching, bye! <laughs>